everyone, Esther here from Esther Esther Healing. Thank you for your time, guys. As I promised today, I'm going through part number two for Venus trans transit to sign of Aries. She did, she started transit uh, yesterday on May 23rd, and she will stay in the sign of Aries until June 17th. Now, what's really, really important for you definitely to watch my number one video, my first first one, where I start to explain to you then she's a transit, uh, you know, from water sign to fire. It's usually um, lacking a little bit of balance. But we need to understand Venus came from the big vacation. She was in her exaltation. She complete all 12 signs and she usually rest in a 12th house, right? In the, uh, in the house of Pisces. She really enjoyed to be there. And, uh, you know, she was there for a while together with Jupiter. And uh, she received a lot of nourishment. And, and even she when she was with um, Saturn, you know, Saturn loves Venus. So now she's in areas. But this time, it's not just uh, any areas. Remember, we right now in the window of time when the both uh, karmic nodes of uh, South Node and North Node, they are right now in areas in Libra. And they directly, uh, you know, Libra, it's represent uh, Venus. Venus represent Libra. And it's extremely important to understand. I'm not sure how many astrologists really talked about, but for you to understand, guys, every time when we have lunar nodes for almost two years in specific house, uh, most of the planets, which is inner planets, they have to pass this transition through these houses. And every time when they inside of the karmic house, they behave in very, very karmic way. So right now we have in Venus, she just uh, started her transit in Aries. And as well, we have Uranus, which is uh, beside uh, Rahu. And it's extremely important because every time when we're going to discuss any other planets will be passing inside of the house of Aries or house in house of Libra, we need to understand they're going to activate the energetical force of Ketu and Rahu, North Node and South Node. This time we have a Venus, which is she came from opposition from Libra, and she's right now in uh, Aries. And it's interesting enough for really people uh, who represent Aries moon, Aries rising, and if the natural position of Venus in Aries, they potentially can really benefit from this house tremendously. And if they will know how to use this uh, position, they actually can improve their love life, their relationship, um, the negotiation skills, especially for areas, it's extremely important. But first, I want to share with you really, really cool information um, from House of Hermes. Now, why it's really important to understand the Hermes explanation of stars, because it's really Hermes, it's the school which has explained the DNA of royal stars and the stars which is each sign built with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a really, really cool thing. I'm, we're going to, before I'm going to explain how it's going to affect your, uh, your specific um, sign. And we're not going to just discuss uh, for you to check your moon or your rising. I'm going to in depth explain to you why you actually need to look where your Venus at. So if you want, you can pause right now my video and open your chart and check three very important things in your chart. Number one check where the Venus is in your natal chart, the time of your birth, in what, in what actually sign. House is different. It's going to be too complicated. Just check in what sign Venus is. Second, what you need to check, uh, if, you over, uh, if you're ready after, after 30 years old, um, even 38, moon definitely very becoming much more important. But if in your natal chart, moon have a less degree than your rising, then moon, it's more important than your rising. Now, if your rising has a lower degree than your moon, you definitely can keep uh, check your rising. But again, I'm not trying to complicate things, but I really want to teach you to be your own astrologer and to understand a little bit more in depth how the ancient astrologers used to look in the chart. And again, I'm going to repeat. First, you're going to check where your Venus is. If, for example, your Venus in your natal chart actually in Aries, it's even more important 
then your moon and your uh, rising, okay? So we're going to take a little bit different approach than you probably used to, especially with Western astrology, okay? Remember, I do not practice Western astrologers. This is channel with sidereal system, Babylonian, and with the knowledge of uh, Sefer Yetzirah, Book of Formation, Kabbalistic knowledge, okay? So look what's happened right now. We today, we are on May 24th, and I'm going to show you two extremely important days. I will consider one of the most positive days for the Venus for the whole entire year. And it's actually coming on 25th, 26th, and 27th. And it's so important. Uh, you can actually, it's not even about making um, important decision. It's about to make a meditation and to see what exactly lacking, what you were trying to change. And you've really been struggling to change with relationship and change with your negotiation skills, your, your patience. I will show you why. Look how cool it is. So I'm going to move right now, chart, and we're going to 25th and we're going to 26th. So 26th, uh, Venus moving to very, very positive degrees, which is for Venus to be in areas in third and fourth degree. It's considered one of the most auspicious, good degrees. It's Athens. It's connecting to the star of Athens. And it's absolutely very prosper. It's um, the cosmic energy going to help tremendously. And the next one, we're going to have really, really positive degrees. It's going to be a degree. So let's see what day. Now, after uh, 27, we're entering to a little bit uh, tricky time. It's going to be a little bit conflicted, but no worries. We are spiritual warriors and we really need to know how to, you know, use this information and when to take umbrella and when not. Okay, beautiful. So now she's in the eight degree and we're talking about May 30th. And I would say in May, um, May 9 as well. Okay, so another very, very positive time for you guys so i hope you're really going to use these days especially 26 and 27 uh very positive day, days it's um it's double energy to support venus because venus in a royal position she's open more to to let you kind of to overcome some uh some difficulties you came because remember it's all about relationship and the nodes we have south and north node for the next, uh, you know, um, one year and eight months, it's all about relationship. It's all about uh, I want to be happy or I want to be right. I want to be right or I want to be happy. And it's all about how to, uh, to transform the war energy to the peace energy, how to see the bigger picture. Very important, especially we have runners here as well. Uh, so let's start right now with the 12 signs. I mean, the 12, uh, 12 houses. So we need to understand in each chart, Venus represents five different forces of energy. You can have a chart, which is you have a night Venus, and you have a chart, which is you have a day Venus. Then your Venus, actually, she can be invisible or she can be in transition. You understand, guys? So this is probably, it's really recommended to, when you're going to do your own personal reading, then we can go over more specific. We can understand so many things. Sometimes we ourselves not telling ourselves truth about ourselves but when you work with professional astrologer and astrologers who really trying to tune to your soul and to communicate with your soul and to help you to be open more you can understand and awaken certain things inside of your chart which is you sometimes we are not allowed to our own selves to see certain things we really need to work on it okay so again for areas guys uh, for you if you have uh, venus in areas or moon arising in areas both of this energy will be really really important and it's if they will affect you on a different level so if it's in moon it's going to affect you emotionally it's going to affect you on a subconscious level very deep if it's actually venus uh, you're born with the venus in areas it's directly going to affect you in a relationship okay so it's really really important and um just remember guys it's it's really important for all of us not to be stuck in limited understanding it's uh, we need to come back to bigger picture because our souls 
so big. We went through so many lifetimes. And every time when we had a permission, we need to get permission to come back to this dimension. Our soul actually back of creator to let us to give us opportunity to practice here what is to be creator and through the restrictions through applying spiritual rules uh, tools law of creation this is how we can take this first step to be the creator okay so for venus in the first house uh, for you guys it's actually a really good position for uh, venus areas you will have opportunity literally even to change to change your appearance to change your image if you've been looking for you'll have so many uh in you know divine inspirations about that because remember when you look good when you feel good you better give her why not we we need to take care of ourselves on one percent but while we take taking care of ourselves on one percent the soul will always need to connect to our deeper understanding who we are now um it can help you this uh, transit to improve your um, communication skills because for you sometimes it's difficult sometimes uh, you speak and then you think and your area is so sweet you know you're like a child of our, of our zodiac system a very male energy uh even if you have if you're a woman and you Aries, uh, you have uh, Venus in Aries, you still, you're very sweet. You don't really have any, you know, uh, real deep anger. You like speak what you think with no agenda, but it's really good to improve your uh, your tactic and your skills and to let the other person to show, you know, what they want to say and to, to be uh, like more tactful. Very, very important. Okay, Aries. So I hope you will take this opportunity and you will understand yourself, use Use these days I mentioned. Don't don't miss this opportunity. Just do meditation. Make a list for yourself. All of you guys, all twelve signs. Make a list. What would you like to improve in your personal relationship? Why you're trapped in certain situation again and again? Okay. I'm moving forward to Taurus. If you have a Taurus, if you have a Venus in Taurus, it's actually excellent because you know it's in her own house. But if this transit, it's going to feel for you like she's in the twelve house. And the 12th house, it's um, for you guys, I don't recommend to make any financial decisions, um, to, be, um, to be more aware how you spend your money, to be more aware what really food represents for you. Uh, it's really good period of time to improve your health, your mental health to improve your uh, physical appearance for Taurus, because for Taurus, it's not easy. Uh, even Venus in Taurus, it's not easy to go sometimes to gym and to really, you know, put, to push yourself. Uh, Venus in Taurus, she's really glorious. She's trying to, in easy way, to look good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these uh, physical uh, physical things need to be applied, especially 12th house. I recommend for the 12th house to walk a lot because 12th house represents feet. And it's really good to dance, to use your feet. You will feel emotionally much better. Because for you, Taurus, it's going to be a little bit um, difficult because the 12th house is the house behind the scene. It's the house you feel sometimes a little bit heavy, but you don't know why. So just use this, uh, this period of time. Don't push you too much, but at the same time, try to achieve the balance with the food, with money, um, as well as I mentioned, exercise walking extremely extremely important you will you will see as soon you feel a little bit down as soon you feel a little bit uh, under the kind of weather just put comfortable shoes take your partner and go for a walk you will see you will feel right away better and have conversation during the walk for all 12 signs i, I really uh, recommend if you want to have some good conversation with your partner don't just jump and just start conversation find the right time right moment Invite your partner for a walk. While you walk, op uh, make your partner more open. L uh, just hear what he has to say. And then when your partner ready, he's in good, in more open position, you can actually say some things which you would never say maybe when you will be reactive, you know? So just take this uh, as a good advice. Now for you, uh, my dear Gemini, it's going to be in your 11th house. It's actually one of the best. I'm really happy for Gemini's because, you know, for you, Gemini's, when I'm saying Gemini, remember, if you have uh, Venus in Gemini or you have Moon in Gemini, if you have a Moon Gemini, so you always feel Venus, uh, she's, she's in your 12th house, usually. And 
in in the fifth house as well. It's represented a 12th and fifth house energy in your birth chart. So for you guys, um, um, the relationship, it's always been a little bit of struggle because you're really good for the romantic life. But when it comes to one uh, on daily commitment, it's a little bit more difficult. So this time, you actually can improve relationship with your siblings. You can improve relationship with your teachers, with your mentors. You can become mentor because remember, even when uh, Venus and Gemini, she's really glorious how she can pass the information, how she can speak to the masses, okay? So, and for the married couple, you can definitely improve um, you know you can improve your relationship if you're thinking about the children this is actually excellent uh, excellent time as well okay so for you gemini just really use this opportunity it's really excellent excellent energy for you um just remember it's a very karmic position too because venus uh, there with a very special guest she has uranus and most important she has Rahu. And Rahu, it's uh, definitely have no patience. So Venus become a little bit impatient. So just remember that. For you Cancerians, my darlings, you have your 10 house. So it's actually really excellent for Cancerian. I love it. Because remember 10 house, it's something in your position from Capricorn. So you're kind of used to this energy. It's constantly you have to face your own Tikkun to, you know, to improve your um, uh kind of leadership skills on the level of uh, high rank level, right? And uh, you will see when now Venus is going to show you a couple things about your own family, how you as a superior behaving with your family, because you coming from the home place and you're going to more uh, business oriented place. And for married people as well, for your spouse, Try not to manage your spouse, even with your energy, with your, because cancer sometimes just by a disappearing act, they actually subconscious try to manage other people. Okay. So be more open, be more light. It's excellent in house. Uh, Venus can help you to understand your career, current career, uh, career uh, or where you're planning to go. You can actually imagine already yourself on the next level. If you were planning to ask your boss for um, some improvement, uh, financial improvement, or maybe for the next level for yourself, this is the good actually time for you to use this opening. It's excellent. Okay. So for you, Cancer, uh, uh, bottom line, uh, you need to uh, think even what property you can invest because it's excellent time anything connect to your property you can be very practical in that sense okay so for you leos uh it's going to be in your uh nine house now this transit uh can be fav favorable actually for your professional life as well because it's represent this your speech and it's represent by the way your father ancestor lineage you Leos can really this period of time start to remember things about your childhood, about your father, what he told you, uh, or anyone who represent uh, the male uh, figure, the mentor figure for you, your childhood, because you come in from the fifth house initially, right? Leo represent fifth house. And if you're in your birth chart, Venus and Leo, it's it's beautiful. She actually loved to be in Vin in Leo in a sense of how she present yourself, even though Sun, and she used to be with this energy because she's really one of the planets after Mercury. She under the Sun, so she loves Leo. She loves this energy, and now it's going to be in the ninth house. Definitely use this opportunity and. Um, so to say, improve your speech as well, because nine house represents Sagittarius and Sagittarius really always when Venus and Sagittarius with Sagittarius energy, this is what you're going to feel a little bit like Sagittarius. She can be sometimes too daring. So the tact, the feminine side, and if you're male and you, you're Leo and you, you have a moon in Leo or you have your um, Venus in Leo, just don't be just romantic from how what, how you think what is the romantic represent. See what really your partner wants. What is really represent for your partner to be romantic, you know, because sometimes our partners for them love represent a little bit different. So it's a really good time. And it can help you actually with communication with your children. 
and it can help you with your professional communications as well. It's actually, yeah, it's really excellent, especially if you're in a position of mentoring, you're in a position of teaching, if your position, uh, you know, to help people to improve themselves, you're going to receive even more divine inspiration for this matter, okay? Okay, so I wish you good luck, Leos. And now we have to Virgo. Now for you, Virgos, um, it's going to be in your uh, aid house. Um, it's probably another like a Taurus, you and Taurus, you guys uh, um, going to be a little bit feel a little bit, um, you know, some maybe legal ma matters will come out some battles on the um, you know, other people money, you're going to feel a little bit, you, you will feel a little bit, you feel a little bit maybe down how you understand the relationship and how the, uh, your partner or other people come and see you. So what I do recommend for you, Virgos, instead to eat yourself and to analyze too much and to analyze your partner, just really open yourself, especially Venus, if you're a natural chart, Venus and Virgo, it's not a favorite place to be because remember, it's the energy of Mercury, very quick, very, you know, logical. And Venus not really feel too comfortable, even though she look, she actually in the zodiac system, she's beside Mercury, but they really communicate differently. Therefore, for you, Virgo, many times, the love represent for you to be on time, life represent to be clean, to be uh, aesthetic, but can you imagine you will have opportunity to see this person and to let other people to show the color and to try to see who they really are, not the way how you want to see them. You understand? Um, what else? I will. I would say for you guys, do not make any uh, decisions for other people or give them any advice connect to the money it's not the best time right now except on 26 27 and 28 this is going to be interesting at least interesting uh, you know period of time for you if you will use this cosmic window you can if you look into meet someone you in potentially can create something new inside of you which is can help you to present yourself in different light for other people okay one thing i do recommend for virgos not to, you know, not to put you guys down in a sense of because of the eight house, it's going to felt a little bit mystical and heavy for you. Just, just think about uh, what is really perfection in front of creation. What we think here, how we see perfection, it's not necessarily what is the perfection in front of creation. Just try to be simple. This is a really good time and good period of time to simplify things, not to complicate, okay? And remember, your mind it's really, you have to protect your mind and to protect how you analyze and how you see other people. Okay, Virgo, so I'm uh, wishing you guys good luck. Now, Libras, guess what? It is in your seventh house. It's going to be super important for you. I can't even tell you. It's like, uh, you know, for you, um, if we have Keto, we have uh, Karmic Keto, South Node, right now in Libra, and if you have your Venus in Libra, or you have your moon in Libra, you're gonna something, you will have to go some such a deep revelation, and some deep understanding, this is the most important period of time until June 17, uh, for the, it's going to affect you for the next 18 years, because of the Keto located there, okay, and you're facing Rahu, but it's your own Venus, it's uh, your own planet. She's going to open up and show you things, some things you didn't want to see. Your partner would push you. Uh, you will, it will ac activate some probably, you know, maybe even conflicts. Some, your, even your in laws, your, your father and mother in law can suddenly come with some conflict. So, suddenly, going to tell you things, you will say, my God, where it's coming from, it's uh, it's really big, big possibility it can happen. So anything connect to relationship, anything connect to the seven house, you know, marriage, partnership, one-on-one -on -one relationship, business partnerships, clients, uh, uh, you know, alien, uh, like alliance, um, conflict, legal matters, 
this is the period of time. So 26, 27, 28, use this day, gain some more extra power, extra uh, foundation for yourself, understand things differently. Libra restriction, number one for you. I really want you guys to come out from this period of time it's so strong, like a, like a phoenix, like a rising phoenix, you know, you will go through things. But when you come out from this period of time, after June 17, you're going to be feel so strong. You're going to feel like you're reborn again. Please use this opportunity. I can't stress enough. Okay. I wish you good luck, Libras. Now, my dear Scorpios, you know, you one of the strongest warriors we have in the Zodiac system. Can you imagine to born Scorpio and go through this? always a life and death energy and to, to feel everything intense real everything so real you know guys you really uh warriors a lot of things you're holding for us so uh what's happening it's going to be in your sixth house now what is really six hours? Let's just remember, it's day-to-day -day life. It's a work routine. It's a self-improvement. It's a service. It's service to other people. It's your health, nutri nutrition. It's your pets. It's the employment. It's your co-workers. And it's a duty, right? So six hours, extremely important. So Scorpio, you know how you're very committed to be on time, but meditate. Uh, take a time for meditation. Take a time to relax. Take a time to have a good sleep. Use this transit to understand things, how you communicate with your partners. What is your expectation of your partners? Try to avoid conflict, not because just you hold things inside, boiling inside, not to speak out. No, transform things. Transform how you see things. Why in the first place you, you bring conflict before uh, you see things in more balanced way, okay? I'm just really... I'm, I'm tough with you, Scorpio, because you. this is the language you understand. And if you're Venus and Scorpio, you remember Venus and Scorpio, she sometimes, oh, I love you or I hate you. You know, God forbid if somebody cheats someone with Venus and Scorpio, you know, uh, one of uh, one of the books says, you know, this person can come and destroy the house and you leave like, uh, like it was like, um, you know, special... Um, a special healing treatment for them so now then we are in a spiritual path we cannot afford to be this way no extremes uh no agenda no you know not to pay back this is not the way how spirituality works and this is not how your soul wants you to go through this process so it's really really important transit for you scorpio because of the sixth house and because of the you know libra in inside of the Rahu, our current Tikkun, our incarnation now, what what lessons we came to learn this lifetime, okay? So I think you guys, uh, if you will take uh, up on this challenge and you will understand, I think you, you can really, really benefit from this period of time, okay? So I wish you good luck. Now for uh, Sagittarius, for you Sagittarius, it's going to be in the fifth house. Uh, fifth house is really excellent because, in, you know, it's a firehouse and it's a house of creativity, performance. And you Sagittarius, you excellent performance, when, especially when it comes to speech. Um, it's about, you know, self-expression. Uh, play entertainment um, it's actually your it's very romantic house it's your kids as well it's uh, it, and it's a little bit dramatic it can be drama house too so what i want to tell you if you are sagittarius in your natal chart your venus in sagittarius she's beautiful but she's lacking of tact if you moon in sagittarius and um, it's in low degree than your rising sometimes the way how you express yourself emotionally you can be reactive before proactive okay so take this uh, really to consideration you, you by the way your artistic ability artistic tendency can really activate right now i really recommend for you to dance uh to put music to it's actually really good for everyone but for you because it's going to be in your fifth house you're going to feel extra, then you want to bring more excitement. So do it, absolutely. Just watch what comes from your mouth, always, okay? So good luck to you, Sagittarius. Now, guys, for you, Capricorns, it's going to be in your fourth house. Uh, surprise, you know, is the, is the house you face all your life because the house is house of cancer. 
And uh, it's really important house for the relationship with your family, with your mother figure. And what is really mm, fourth house? It's a home. It's a family. It's your ancestor lineage, your heritage, right? It's your inner world, you know, your roots, your, um, your it's land. And by the way, it's connect to uh, land and architecture, any foundation. If you're planning, uh, for example, to buy house or to sell house, or even to renovate house before sale, excellent. You're gonna have a lot of luck, a lot of luck here. It's a lot of love, a lot of support. Uh, what I do recommend for you guys on 26, 27, 28, to meditate, to connect to your ancestral lineage, especially from your mother's side. See what's, uh, what is really there holding you in order for you to be more happy within yourself and more happy in one-on-one one, one -on -one relationship. Very, very important because it's Rahu there. Rahu will open. You see, the way how Rahu works, guys, if Rahu see you open, you really want to change, you, uh, you actually asking, he has no choice. This energy will start to work for you. Okay, so just keep this in mind. So I wish you good luck, guys. Uh, now we have Aquarius next. For you guys, it's going to be in the third house. It's excellent. It's the, you know, third house is the house of Gemini. It's air energy. It's something really familiar to you. In third house represents siblings. And uh, you guys deal with siblings all the time. And it's a it's a represent thinking thinking like uh, logical thinking it's a uh, writing uh, learning and it's you remember you remember gemini energy it's about learning and giving the knowledge learning and giving back the knowledge it's short travel so if there's opportunity for you for short travel you can do it guys you will enjoy it's going to be really good for your emotional health for your communication um if you want to learn languages and you want to learn how to sing even it's going to be really, really uh, excellent for you. It's uh, for your, you know, your local community and your mindset. For you, Aquarius, because you came from, you know, Uranus, it's your, uh, it's your really your planet, outer planet, right? So you don't just have Saturn, uh, you have Uranus as well. And look what we have here with Venus, we have Uranus. You're going to be really, really affected by this uh, transit. And what I do like, if you know how to use, you actually can meet someone in the community or you can improve your relationship through community and through volunteering. This is the secret for you guys, okay? See if you can assign to some committed to some volunteering job. See if you can call your siblings or people who you were thinking to call for a while. Offer yourself, offer your time, one-on-one -on -one time relationship. Very important. Just to take into consideration because you came to this world to give to community and to give to this world, but most importantly, one-on-one -on -one relationship. And this is transit can definitely, uh, if you will uh, create proper energy and you will create new seed, you will improve your one-on-one -on -one relationship because it's really important for you. You're probably not showing, but deep inside, you really need someone, one person who you can come home and you can open up and you can share your dreams. You can share your imagination because you guys came from the future. You came here to tell us how we should live really, what is really community, what is really Mashiach, what is really final redemption. It's within your essence, okay? So wish you good luck. Now, my dear Pisces, uh, for you guys, it's going to be in your second house. Um, second house, it's really good for you in a sense of it's a self-worth, right? So Pisces sometimes a little bit lacking the bone of the self-worth. So the second house I don't recommend to make any financial decision, but what I do recommend for Pisces to take courses. Or uh, there's a huge uh, community on YouTube uh, with different courses about investment, how to save your money, how to use you properly. And very important with the second house to donate. If you didn't donate to any community, it's a good time because you're going to create a special opening uh, for the sustenance. You know, for all signs, by the way, guys. Donation, uh, it's extremely important. Once a month at least, 10% from your income, it's not even belongs to us. This is the uh, this is the law of creation. Whatever we make 10%, it's right that we need to be donated. You, it is a way how to calculate. Definitely after the tax, you can donate at 10%, find the organization you believe 
uh, if they, especially if organization help people to transform, is the, the best place to invest money. So because of the se second house, uh, um, Pisces, you know, it's material possessions. And it's a comfort, a comfort house, lux luxuries and uh, self-worth, like I said, security and self-esteem. So I do recommend for you guys, uh, Pisces, especially if you're Venus in Pisces, and she just came from such a beautiful exaltation. You probably felt so amazing in the sense of how, uh, you know, Venus really nourish uh, Pisces uh, when she's in Pisces. Now she's in the areas you you're probably going to meet people who's going to be a little bit tougher and going to say things not really in the most polite way. So just tough it out, tough it up and be more tough, more it's good for you, Pisces. And start to, uh, and you know, many times Pisces, especially Venus and Pisces, they sometimes can have different level of addiction in the relationship for someone. They, they many times can be in love with somebody who they don't really have uh, love back. And this is how they feel, you know, lost and they feel a lack of love. Just try to really step out, zoom out to be like a movie creator, like, like your own movie creator and uh, movie director and see why you attract some people, which is many times they're not really giving you the same love you expect, your, your expectation. So this is something, this is very, very karmic. And because Keto, I mean, Rahu there, you're going to face certain situation on a personal level in a relationship, especially and with financial as well, where you've been neglected, neglecting, and now you will be facing. And don't forget, Uranus won, won letters to just to pass and by without lesson. He will take us back and will make us face what we didn't want to face voluntarily, okay? So just understand this transit, Pisces. If you have a Pisces, uh, Venus in Pisces, or you have a moon in Pisces, just really understand much deeper my message for you. Stop to give energy to people and love who do not actually don't, don't feel desire to give you back. And if you're already in a relationship, don't just give. It's about sharing. It's two different concepts, giving and sharing. We always need to, to understand you cannot put three liters of water in a cup, which is only contain 200 of grams of water. So always be balanced. See how much the person can take before you're going to overwhelm all with your own emotions, okay? And stop to feel your own pain. It's not about that. It's another illusion. Just step, step out from this, uh, you know, from, from hurt to be hurt or to be oversensitive. Uh, the, you know, spiritual person, one of the major quality for the spiritual being, it's to be um, self, you know, emotionally strong. It's extremely uh, resilient. You know, the emotional resilience, it's one of the most important qualities we can achieve here. Because if you're emotionally resilient, you're not giving your energy waste for, for really many times nonsense. You're strong. You you understand bigger picture. So try to understand this, guys, okay? Cool. So I wish you good luck, all of you guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thank you so much for all your emails, your questions. It's uh, very, very important for me. And if you're looking to, to open your chart, especially if your birthday close, and right now for this period of time when we have Ketu and Rahu, if you didn't know, you didn't do your chart, I strongly recommend to find astrologer you, you trust and to see because the first and, and seventh house, no matter what sign you represent, it's extremely important. This is not typical Ketu and Rahu, South and North Node. This is most important South and North Node for the next 18 years. And then another thing I want to remind you guys, I'm working on a new video about South and North Node, not just about uh, where you get in Raho, because every nine years, you actually have an opposite return. Okay, for example, I'll give you example. Let's say in your birth chart, your um, your Rahu in Aries and you get in, um, in uh, Libra. It's exactly what's happening now. But let's say your Rahu in Libra and Ketu in, uh, in Aries. So it's called 
a position of return. So it's extremely important as well. It's happened every nine years. So we're going to discuss so you will understand as well. You always can come back or you can predict when it's coming and to be more prepared for yourself as well, okay? So I wish you guys, as always, uh, lots of blessings. And I'm looking forward to speak with you soon. Bye-bye.